Hi everyone, welcome back to the New Age to Jesus Diaries. I hope you're all well. I'm back with another video already. So if you watched my last video where I asked for prayers on help with focus and time for my content, I would just like to say thank you for praying for me because it definitely worked. So uh, praise God for that. Praise God and thank you for the prayers. Um, bit of an awkward camera angle today. It's because I've twisted my ankle, sprained my ankle. It hurts still. Uh, it happened a few days ago, but it, it, it's still it's still hurting. It's not fully healed at all. Um, so it, it's just comfortable for me to sit like this. Um, so today it might be a bit off-putting because it's a weird camera angle, but it shouldn't affect the, the message that's coming through the video, all right? Um, so... What is in today's video? Today's video, I've got my notes here. Um, today's video is about can we trust the Bible? Is it reliable? And it's also addressing just a couple of the myths that are heavily promoted in New Age. So one being that the Bible was changed um, at the Council of Nicaea. Um, that's like a massive theme that always runs through like the New Age community. I'll go through exactly what the myths are um, with regards to that because they are myths when I get to that part of the video. Um, and also just about, you know, is it just reliable in it, in general? So I found that there was a lot going around about the Bible when I was a New Ager and I just believed it all without ever looking into anything myself. You You, you kind of do in the New Age, like you get fed information and I know it sounds silly, but you go by the way it feels like and you sort of, you know, it's all about your intuition guiding you and you feeling that if you have heard truth and it feels good, then that means it's true. It's it's all feelings uh, based, really, which obviously the Bible tells us not to go by um, because that's how we get deceived. Um so I, I just thought it was really important to do a video on this because one, when I was coming out of like new age and coming to Jesus, one of the first things that I set out to do was just like, right, okay, I'm going to look into the Bible because I'm not going to get tricked. And I was, <laughs> believe it or not, that was my intention. I was like, right, I'm not going to get fooled. I need to know like how it's manipulated, how it's corrupted, like what bits I can trust, what bits I can't trust. And, you, you know, I, I was on this sort of mission to really delve deep into it and, you, you know, find the answers that I was looking for. Um, and as I looked into it, the more and more I looked into it, the more and more all the claims about the Bible being changed, manipulated, everything like that, they just proved to be false because there, there was no substance to the claims. Like, we can easily watch a YouTube video where it's, um, where it's, I'm just going to say that there's something else has come into my mind then, but this is the beautiful thing about the internet, right? Because YouTube's a brilliant thing because you can get a lot of, like, people hold information, right? And people know how to gather information. People can do some really good cases based on evidence and things like that. But then the downside of like YouTube, the internet and things like that is like anyone can just put anything out there, which has not been researched, has not been thought through. And then it, it can be presented in a way that sounds very believable. Now, the more I ventured into um, trying to find out if the Bible was manipulated and how, and to be honest, at this point, I still thought certain parts were, um, but I thought that there was some, obviously some truth in it. Um, but the more and more I looked into it, the more and more I found out that I really can trust the word of God and it is the word of God. So I'm kind of sharing the, the information that helped me have more faith and trust in, in the Bible, right. And, and, and come to Christ, um, with more confidence, um, in this is the truth. Um, and I've, I've done the research, I've looked behind it, I've listened to the claims of each side and and this is the thing, once you do do the research, if you really go down, you know, the rabbit hole as people say, um, if you go down the rabbit hole on these kind of topics, you'll easily be able to distinguish between the false claims and the, the, the genuine evidence is there because there's 
there's you know people can send like a hundred videos through on the manipulation of the bible and things like that but when you dig in under the claims that are there they normally lead nowhere or it's that it, it's evidence that's taken but twisted and manipulated in order to mean something else and i'm really glad i actually looked into this at the start because there were so many people that did come to me with such claims and I'd already done this foundational work that I was like, I don't need to listen to that. Or some of it I did listen to, but then I quickly saw, right, okay, it's this, that and the other, that is false, um, these types of things. So it was like, for, for me, it was like a foundation of faith. Um, and I think it's really important to have those foundations in place because obviously your, your foundations are, are your strength, aren't they? They're what holds you up. Um, so I, I encourage anyone to look into such topics of what I'm discussing here um, and, and you know, do your own research and read your own books and listen to your own lectures and things like that on these kind of topics. It's quite funny as well because in the New Age, there's this emphasis on words, right? Words have so much power. Words have so much meaning and you don't understand how powerful words are. But then we laugh at the fact that we think God would speak through that word. Like it's, it's, it kind of doesn't make sense. Like why wouldn't, if words are that powerful, then why wouldn't the creator speak to us through words? Just, it, it actually probably is the, the best method. For him to to speak through because it's written down so you know it's like that is the word then and there's no confusion so a lot of non-believers will compare the bible to the telephone game and the the idea or the picture that they're trying to create with that is the telephone game is very much like i'll tell you something and then you tell that person and you tell that person and then you tell that person in england i think it's known as like chinese whispers if you've ever played chinese whispers um, but it's that the telephone game is not a very good representation of it because it doesn't happen like that because with the word of mouth, you rely on memory. Um, so we're not relying on memory because they, the scribes, they copied texts that were there with them. So it's basically making a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy so people would say oh that's like the telephone game so it gets lost in translation well it's like well no because they're copying from a they're copying from something so it's not like they're trying to do it from memory so i just think it's a really poor representation um but however there are variants obviously in the texts because scribes will make mistakes or they might read something the wrong way around so for example one of the like a popular variant in the manuscripts is uh, some say Christ Jesus instead of Jesus Christ, like those kind of things. Um, so there will always be variants. Like we've got loads of manuscripts. I think connected to Jesus, it's 24,000 manuscripts. Now, manuscripts connected to Caesar is like seven. And we know a lot about Caesar. So imagine how much information they can retain from these 24,000 manuscripts that are connected to Jesus and over 5,000 are New Testament fragments and we have actual copies of the New Testament as well so this is there's a lot of information that can be gathered and if anything we are getting closer and closer to God's word rather than further away now, I'm not going to go into this point too much because I kind of did this on my KJV only video. So I, I just feel like I'd be repeating myself. But if you want to know more about like the translation and transmission, please go see that video. I'll link it in the description. But the main point I'm trying to make is it's very clear that God preserves his word. So there's evidence of that everywhere. If you, if you look for it, it's so easily, you it will literally just come like a vacuum because there's so much evidence out there about the Bible and the the fact that God preserves the word throughout. Now, like I've said before, there will be variants because humans aren't perfect. And when we copy things, it's very unlikely that it's gonna be an exact, exact copy because there's room for human error, right? And then that human error will then obviously, you know, have an effect. So there, there will always be variants, but the main bulk of the meaning of the text, there's been 
no variance there. Like I, they say it's less than 1% for a variance for under meaning. But in the variants that are in the Bibles, the deity of Christ, the resurrection, like the virgin birth, things like that, there's no challenge there. Like they all are like in alignment with with the, the doctrines of Christianity, right? So there's, there's no main fundamental doctrine of Christianity that is challenged through like variation of manuscripts. It's worth mentioning the Dead Sea Scrolls because this is like really good evidence that what I'm saying is correct. Um, the Dead Sea Scrolls around the 1950s, they were discovered. Um, they were copies of the Old Testament, which were a thousand years older than any previous copies we've had. And they were nothing contradicted the copies that we have. So it's again, a confirmation that God preserves his word, right? So at this point, I was like, right, okay, I, the, the manuscripts from a historical point of view, I can take as being reliable, truthful. Um, I mean, think about it, it's history. Like, it's history. Like, any other kind of history that we learn about, we never question the evidence. So th the, these manuscripts that are found are history. They're history. So they they hold just as much validation as any other historical document and it's not just one like we're talking about there's thousands of these documents so just like everything else that we class as history this is also history as well but then we go to like the 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 sort of supernatural side because once you start to read the bible and you open up the bible like it is like you're meeting with god and you might not feel that every time. You might not even feel that he's he's listening sometimes. Yeah, he's there with you. But th there will be times when you do feel that really strongly. Um, it obviously, you know, it kind of depends what season you're in and things like that. But the Bible is a supernatural book. There's a reason why it's the best selling book a year upon year upon year. Yeah, it's because every time you open it, you meet with God. Um and I've had some just some beautiful experiences through reading the Bible, some realizations, some like lessons learned, some like prophecies almost like just 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 absolutely beautiful. Um, and I do believe that I speak with God when I open the Bible I in a, co a conversation with God. But it's also amazing, amazing, like absolutely mind blowing how the Bible has been put together. And sometimes you think it must be God. Like th there's no other way to explain it. So the Bible is written by 40 people over the space of 1,500 years. So there is a gap between the Old Testament and the New Testament of about 400 years. So what is so incredible is these, most of these authors, I mean, in the New Testament, they knew each other because they were like writing letters to each other and things like that. But most of these authors did not know each other. And they wrote these scriptures. Now, as Christians, we believe that all scripture is God breathed. So the Holy Spirit was was working through these people. So God was speaking through these people so the words are god breathed words right and these people wrote the, like scripture and they all connect with one one another what they wrote but they didn't know each other they wasn't aware of what the other person was writing they wasn't even alive together a lot of the time so it's like absolutely mind-blowing that the theme i mean even in genesis Jesus is prophesied in Gen Genesis, like Jesus runs through the whole entire Bible of the 1,500 years. It's, it's absolutely insane once you, you get to know. And do you know what? I, I haven't even, st I know I haven't even started. So I know what even I know is not even half of how incredible like the Bible is. And this is another thing that blew my mind, right? So Jesus fulfilled, Jesus fulfilled 300 prophecies from the Old Testament. So these writers that lived 400 years before or, or longer, yeah, or longer, they were writing and prophesy, prophesying 
the Messiah that would come and do these things. And Jesus came and fulfilled. Well, they say that the prophecies are over 300, but a lot of them are references. So actual prophecies, you can say 54. So he fulfilled 54 prophecies. And I've got to give a mention to... Um, a YouTube video that I'm going to put in my playlist and the playlist will be um, called Can We Trust the Bible? And it's by a pastor called, I believe he's a pastor, um, called Rob Morris. And he actually um, shares this study in that video and it's really good. I really, really recommend you go watch it. And basically they did a a study of the chances of him fulfilling the prophecies that he did and the chances were well there's not a number for it the chances were eight um it was a one with 18 zeros so there's not even a number for that which is just insane like he he fulfilled the prophecy of where he'd be born which how would you do that um where where and how he would die um just like things like there'd be casting lots over his clothes when he was crucified and things like that. Things that like a human couldn't set up, like they wouldn't be able to have control over. Like no one can have control over how they would die or no one can have control over where you'd be born. Like, well, unless you were God, right? And then lastly, just addressing the, the myths about the Council of Nicaea. Now, I watched an amazing YouTube on this, and it was by Melissa Doughty. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Sorry if it's not. Um, and Wesley Huff. And Wesley is basically a, um apologist, and I think he's got a degree in soteriology. Um, basically, he studies uh, church history for a living. Like he really knows his stuff when it comes to this kind of stuff and textual criticism and things like that. Um, so I'm going to link that also in the playlist of Can We Trust the Bible? Because it's an hour long and I'm just going to give like a, a quick overview here. But these, these myths have become massively popular because of the Hollywood blockbuster with Tom Hanks in um, called The Da Vinci Code. Um, and obviously then it was like pushed quite widely in the mainstream and you know got a lot of hype and now everyone kind of sees it as like that's actually like historical and that's what happened which he didn't so the myths are that there was books taken out of the bible that isn't true um and a lot of them are like oh yeah the gospel of thomas and the gospel of mary and all that kind of thing was taken out at the Council of Nicaea. Like, it's just not true at all. Um, and at the time, Gnosticism, like the Gnostic Gospels, were really just not getting much attention at all. Um, they had kind of like had their day. Um, they they kind of started making a bit of noise, the um, Gnostic Gospels, like Mary Thomas. Um, I can't remember the others off the top of my head. Um but by this time, it started kind of dying down a bit and they were never really taken, well, they wasn't taken seriously by the church. Um, they were never really even considered scripture, like God breathed scripture. So that was a complete myth that, that there was books taken out of the Bible at the Council of Nicaea. Um, also that Jesus was all of a sudden like made God at the Council of Nicaea. So it, it's like the Trinity. The Trinity was invented at the Council of Nicaea. Again, that wasn't true. Um, I will delve into that because that's kind of the main connection that people make with a kind of deception with it. Um, but the suppression of women and reincarnation as well, apparently was discussed at the, uh, the Council of Nicaea, again, which was not true. But really, the reason for the Council of Nicaea wasn't to create the Trinity. It was to defend the Trinity. And meaning the tr Trinity was already being taught three persons in one, right? Um, that was already being taught, like, well before the date of the Council of Nicaea. There was this guy, Arius, and he basically was teaching um, another doctrine other than the Trinity. And he was teaching that God, that he was still teaching that Jesus was God, but that he that, that God was 
God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit is kind of like one being. So it wasn't three persons in one. It was just one being, but it was just like different aspects. So I'm not going to go into like too much about the, the Trinity and what Arius was teaching. Um, but there, there were differences. Yeah, there were differences in how, how he was teaching compared to the, the Trinity method of teaching, which... Um, is scriptural based so the whole point of the council of nicaea was to basically just put an end to his teaching because it was just gaining a bit of traction and they were like well okay well we've got to do something about this because you, you know it's it's not scriptural so um this happens like some of the main bishops like the bishop of rome and things like that didn't even go like it wasn't it wasn't this big ma mapped out massive event that people think it was um, or it's been made out to be, should I say. Um, but I think the reason why they've picked it, which Melissa and Wesley talk about in the um, in the video, is it, it's kind of like on the map, that event. So it's like quite easy to sort of suggest that, oh, yeah, that, that was a big thing because it actually is an event in history where you could easily pinpoint things to. Um, so it wasn't, again, again, in, in the Da Vinci Code, which, um, th they kind of make out that it was like a really close vote as well. And it wasn't, it was like, there was like 300 odd people there, um, 312 or 20 or something like that. And it, the votes were like three to like 300. So it was, it was just, it, it was literally to sort of, stop some noise that was happening really so the whole point of the event was really just to put a stop to areas teaching false doctrine like that's that's really what it came to but it's just been mapped out as this massive thing where all these deceptions happened um and you know you can clearly see that that the, the fact that jesus was god was being taught way before like the Council of Nicaea, it was like in, in 320 AD or something, or 325 AD. I can't remember. I should have wrote that down. But like, this is like well long, like long after, like, you, you know, Christians are, are claiming Christ to be like God, you know, it, it just, again, it's like one of these things that you look into. And then once you see it, it just, it just clearly doesn't add up. Like th there's, it, it's just so much falseness in the claims so yeah i mean that that is a very quick overview they they discuss it in an hour on that youtube and it really is an interesting conversation and i would encourage anyone to watch it that's actually interested in that topic because it, it's really good um but i just want to say um as per usual thank you so much for watching um obviously please do like subscribe and comment to support the channel and just thank you for everyone that does support the channel and i really like hearing from you guys as well so um i just feel like it's like a really nice community being built on this channel which is really cool and i just want to say thank you to everyone that's been praying for the channel um i really do appreciate it and if there's any way that i can pray for you then please let me know um but other than that i would just like to say thank you very much for watching and good night and god bless Bye.